Okay, hello everyone. If somebody's still uh, wandering around, please grab a drink and, and some food and join us. Welcome everyone to the first Potter Helsinki meetup. So I just heard that there had actually been been a couple of Flutter uh, meetups before, but uh, when I started looking, we didn't find it in groups. So we started one, and lucky to have you here now uh, at Montel. Um, Montel is a three-year-old um, software development company. Um, we are a um, little over 20 people, um, mostly full-stack developers, uh, and the company company um, is located here in Finland in a couple of locations. Uh, we have also people in Argentina and <coughs> Pakistan. Um, the headquarters is here, but the company was founded in Enontekia. Uh, hence, we have a sort of Lapland theme in the decor. Um, our clients are mostly startups and uh, middle-sized companies uh, for whom we do a lot of uh, Python and uh, Cloud DevOps and Kubernetes projects. And we basically do like a multitude of different different projects, and uh, our our clients are really sort of various and very interesting. Uh, so we we're not focused in any type of uh, one specific thing, but get to get to work with many interesting companies. Mm, Flutter is our favorite mobile app development framework at the moment. Uh, we also do. React Native, as we spoke, but I think Flutter is sort of winning at the moment here. Um, you will later hear why. Um, we've already used it in a couple of uh, client projects, um, but we're really eager to hear, and it will be very interesting to hear how you guys have used it and, and what are the benefits. Um, so we're going to have time for discussion after we have a couple of uh, presentations. First, our um, Lauren here is going to talk about he, how we use Flutter in developing the uh, mobile app for um, Type Window Center Kick AI. Um, and also, Yus is going to talk about using Flutter in web. Uh, but before that, uh, the good people at Nevercode have, have been uh, nice enough to sponsor the event. So, Martin's here. Would you like to say a couple of words before Lauren kicks up? Sure. Up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was really, really excited to see that there's a uh, Flutter meetup uh, near Estonia. Estonia is small, and uh, you guys uh, rushed ahead of us to let this meet up. Uh, never because we did this uh, CI CD for Flutter, Code Magic, which is the big banner you saw out there. And we really support the Flutter community, we try to help you. With uh, supporting all the latest releases, so on other way. We also have CI CD, and uh, then I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Martin. And please, Laure, tell us about. How you this is our protective palm ready with the presentation. Yes, thumbs up. So welcome on my behalf as well. I'm Laurie, one of the founders here at Montel, and I'm going to tell you about Kick AI, which is the uh, biggest Flutter project we've done. And uh, what is Kick AI? It's a wearable smart sensor for martial arts. Focusing right now on type one, but branching out to <coughs> my boxing or karate is, is fairly trivial. Uh, it's no longer a wet dream of a martial artist, it's an actual product, which is this. You can buy it online. Actually, I can pass it around so you can actually take a look. Who was it? What price? Oh, I think. I can't remember the specifics. I think it's 199 for the box that contains two sensors. Those sensors connect with your smartphone and then they enable you to uh, train more efficiently. They contain different games for reaction, for survival, and then also have free training modes that help you again, that help you advance your martial arts skills. Uh, 
but enough of the marketing bullshit. The technology is, is pretty much here. <laughs> so there's a, going from the right, there's a sensor. Uh, it works over Bluetooth, low energy, uh, has a custom protocol, it's a custom design, the hardware is also customized and written in C. Now that then connects to the mobile app that we've in the current iteration written completely in Flutter with some native parts in, in Kotlin, Java and Swift. <coughs> and then there's a cloud component uh, written in Elixir and Phoenix and uh, running on top of ADS. Um, thinking a bit about the timeline, so this is a not a new project. We started back in 2016 and we started with React Native, so we experimented quite a bit with it. But that, then at some point, can't remember the specifics, but I think the most of the reasons were related to tooling and kind of lack of, of support for integrating uh, native components, mm -hmm. and we had some problems with it. So at some point, I decided that we just need to get moving quick and have something for our true black belt guys to kick with so that we can you know, see if the whole idea is feasible or not. And I started in August, I started writing uh, Android native code, uh, some Java, but luckily I found Kotlin very quickly because I have a huge dislike for Java, I don't know why. Uh, but then we switched Kotlin and rolled like <coughs> a bit over a year code with that. And then we decided, okay, now the app is ready to be ported to iOS. And then we did what most companies do. So they hire an external iOS developer. And then that guy basically copies the Android app into iOS. We found a very talented guy. He did it in, in just a few months. So we had like a working iOS prototype, uh, but I had huge problems with it. As a coder, I didn't like the fact that we have two code bases and, and, and very little resource sharing between the two. And as a CTO, I hated the fact that whenever we came up with new features, which was fairly quickly, uh, I had to coordinate with two different uh, teams to get those features out. And so we found this interesting little technology <coughs> called Flutter, and that was kind of a novel technology at the time, and I hadn't heard of anybody using it, but we took it for a spin. We gave ourselves a week. <coughs> Let's see where we get in, in that time. And we had a we were seriously surprised how far we got within a week. And then we gave it two more weeks. And, and in three weeks, we had like a rough MVP working. And uh, then a few weeks more, and we had kind of an app with the same kind of features that we had on the Android side. So it was super quick to move with. This, of course, meant that we killed both of our iOS app, which never saw the light of day. And we also killed the Android app. but. Overall, it's been a really good solution for us and it's enabled us to move really quickly. And we're also building iPad applications and kind of other projects on the side now with Flutter. Uh, looking a bit more into detail how, how the app works. So it talks over Bluetooth, low energy, uh, very simple custom protocol with the sensor. The sensor is, these guys are somewhat smart, so they can detect uh, differentiate between normal movement and leg sweeps and then actual kicks and they provide some metadata related to those kicks then over the protocol and then the app understands the context a bit more it knows which leg is left which leg is right and it'll give you the kind of normal things you ex expect from a sports app so there's leaderboards and there's you know, leader account sessions and da 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 normal dashboards and then the app uploads the stuff into the cloud where you have a more persistent storage of everything you've done as a life longer practitioner. The app is, is fairly standard flutter. Um, at this point, I have to confess that uh, there's two guys working on the flutter code right now. I'm the other one, but the main developer, Sam, who is not here with us today, uh, he's done most of the app side, while I focus more on the uh, uh, native code and, and the, the uh, kind of sensor integration stuff. But on the app side, the kind of notable things we're using uh, uh, is Airx Dart for reactive programming, which is really nice for when we're kind of getting a lot of asynchronous events from the sensor. It kind of makes the logic really easy to deal with. And then Redux for keeping a state. Then the uh, ecosystem really provides some really nice tools for 
basic stuff like QR code reading, Facebook and Google logins and so on. I guess the most important uh, bit is of course the sensor code we use and why we separate it into a plugin is that basically when you're dealing with uh, custom hardware and, and fairly fast moving different uh, Bluetooth uh, protocols, you want to build that stuff into native code and not use, uh, not maybe use uh, some ready-made components in the Dart ecosystem. So we built uh, a separate plugin that handles the communication between uh, Swift on the iOS side and then Kotlin and Java on the Android side. And this in, in, in Flutter worked really well. So what we did in the end, we built a custom plugin uh, from the app point of view, it looks like any other plugin you would use. So it looks just like the QR code reader or anything else. It's just a dependency. And that forms really nice API between the rest of the application and then the kind of uh, the native code. As an added bonus, uh, it also, the, the Flutter scaffolding also creates an example app, which I've basically used to build the ugliest user face in the world, kind of a view full of buttons, and then you press on buttons and they do different things like connect to sensors, which all lets to red and da, 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 and does all these kind of things and it helps you debug how, how the sensor connection is working and and also makes possible for us to kind of debug misbehaving sensors that we get every now and then. The communication between the native code and, and then the Dart, the Flutter side is, is handled through uh, the standard method channel. So Super simple, you pass strings and, and kind of hash maps around. Uh, of course, it brings an overhead compared to just doing native, but that overhead is so tiny that I don't want to, nobody notices. Um, this is basically the code, more or less, uh, in, 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 in a screenshot fashion. The, the dark side is like a one liner to get the method channel up, and then you just invoke methods and you have a listener catching the methods on your side. Then it's exactly the same thing on Kotlin, but Kotlin is a bit more verbose, so you have a few more lines. Uh, so you get a two-way street between the native and, and our Swift and iOS, not that much more complicated, same, same stuff. And, and once we got it running, it's been very good. Um, then a word about testing. Uh, how do we do it? We do it badly. Um, there's no, there's no CI/CD or anything fancy like that. What I, the kind of methodology we employ, I like to call uh, black belt monkey testing. So there's two taekwondoins in the uh, in the founding team, and whenever we want to launch something, I give the app to them, and they go kick around. And if they come back happy, then we launch. If not, then they come back yelling. If yeah, usually they yell, but it's a happy yell or sad. <laughs> We have a video. Not them yelling. <laughs> Several. Uh, now we're, we're, we're working on this, and uh, never thought it's something I, I, I or code magic. I took it for test spin, and, and it actually it's running through, but builds are failing. So hopefully that will you know fix itself, or I fix it in, in, in the coming uh, <coughs> days. As, as I kind of recap. Uh, the feelings I, I have on Flutter and what we've had in the development team is that after the native uh, code hassle and the initial problems we had, uh, we started fairly early with Flutter. So I remember reading a lot of code. So there wasn't that much documentation. You just have to dive into the platform code itself. And especially with the method channel implementation, that was a bit hairy. But once we got it running, it's been extremely easy and fast to develop with. And the kind of modularity in the design it has made it like really like a sweet spot for, for sharing work. And uh, Dart as an underlying foundation feels like a really good choice. Uh, for me personally, it, it feels like an end of an era, like for a decade I've been keeping my eye open for any kind of good cross-platform mobile kits like from Qt to, uh, well, Ionic, Cordova, and, and then React Native, and they've all kind of been Promises, but they've kind of underdelivered. But now with, with Flutter, I think we're finally at least close or somewhere there to Nirvana. And uh, this is something 
we first started using the kick AI, but we're now using with other projects. And there's a bunch of other developers here at Montel who also kind of adopted the technology and we're kind of advocating it uh, to our clients as well. And we'll be moving their stuff as soon as possible on this platform. And uh, I almost, you know, unconditionally, I can recommend it to a lot of, a lot of different use cases. Uh, any questions, comments? Not really. Uh, the, uh, the platform is so open-ended. We found cases that weren't solved, like uh, because of the way how Flutter worked, we have to build a lot of widgets ourselves because maybe there was a um, certain type of time picker missing or something. So you end up with that extra work there, but otherwise it's all, all kind of very solvable. So not really anything. And then the rest of the problems, problems have happened on the native side, so you can always go back there. Can you talk about how you do your state management? Yeah. I can try, but I wouldn't be that good in it because the app side is then handled by the other developer. Uh, Redux is, of course, the kind of state we do, and then we persist a bit on the uh, uh, SQLite uh, kind of on the app. And then the kind of the longest persistent storage happens then on, on Amazon and RDS. Do you have any error logging analytics or integrated policy or like Flutter integration? Oh, I wish we had. That would be a really good idea. <laughs> uh, no, no, at the moment, no, we don't uh, have any. Uh, there's a uh, Firebase analytics uh, included, but, but the kind of information, the amount of information we get from there. The audience of this application, how many people use this application? We've sold the sensor uh, some few, a few hundred pieces, and then there's a few, a lot of some of those sensors go to Dojo, so there's you know, several people using the same sensor set. Right. So, something of those lines. Have you ever collected any feedback from users? Yeah, sure. I mean, we get a lot of feedback all the time, and, uh, and a lot of development ideas. Uh, the, Code now is, is kind of solid, it's used in, in training, and now we're kind of branching out for clubs and dojos next, so getting more dashboards for <coughs> team level uh, collaboration. And also we're doing, the uh, next thing we're doing is hands, so we'll have four sensors connected to each end. Uh, have you tried Firebase integration? Uh, not really, not that much. I mean, we have our own custom uh, backends, so that kind of does the persistent. Yeah, but mainly for analytics. Oh yes, well we have. Uh, I'll have to ask Sandy to help us with it. But we have the plugin installed by them, and it, that really gives us that much relevant insight. Part two point five has uh, foreign function interface uh, where it supports C functions. Mm -hmm. uh, are you using those? No, no. It's all already a hassle enough to use Java and go <laughs> and bring in C. You know, and get, <laughs> dealing with enough C of these blocks, but interesting. Yeah. What about crash rates? Huh? Uh, what about the crash crashing rates compared to Android? It's more stable. Um, well, the the kind of we moved so quick with Flutter that the uh, comparing the stability with um, we didn't do a direct comparison, uh, but we haven't really had any problems uh, with with Flutter crashing. The problems we have are then usually related to uh, <coughs> kind of updating firmware sensors or kind of connection with this. So that's kind of the tricky part, Bluetooth connections. Butter itself has been super stable. I have one more question about the, you said in the beginning that you don't like the fact that you have the two code base for Android and iOS. And I'm not that much experience with Flutter. And my question is, uh, do you have how much of this like platform specific code do you have ah, now? Good question. Uh, very little. Uh, we've uh, we've slowly moved uh, everything under the plugin and then slowly moved a lot of the stuff from, from the uh, native code, the dark world. So it actually works quite well so that the only thing basically our native code is handling right now is Bluetooth optimization. So there's a lot of platform specific tweaks okay. you want to do for Bluetooth or energy. So that's then there. But then like all the message parsing and everything happens in. So you basically write once and run everywhere. Yes. So, so we do. Components. 
Um, yeah. So only only when we do changes to the firmware that affect the API between this and the app, then we do changes to uh, to the uh, native <coughs> control. Otherwise, it's all written in Dart. Uh, yes. Uh, how was the documentation from the from the Dart markets? Are you start? In my experience, like the Dart X, it's it's a hit or miss depending on the language. Like, uh, yeah, for Rx Dart, I think it's very okay because it's an Rx Rx implementation like all the others. So you have pretty much the same uh, program programming interface you have with other reactive uh, coding. But but yes, the documentation was was quite lacking, and and I guess still many of the packages are a bit raw. But uh, we haven't had issues. We don't use heavily. We don't heavily use like camera or anything like that. So I don't know if the plugins on that side are. Super stable already, but uh, for our uh, it's been working as well. If any of you want to kick kick around a bit, I have a few sensors there, so we can test. I won't compete, but I can give you a few insights. Yeah, I don't have a question, but just a comment from the Keith.ai website. We have links to app stores, and they're broken. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the that's web developer. Why <laughs> that's, that's why you start moving. Yeah, yeah that's why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Tom? Make things move fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make things move. Yeah. So, did you show some screenshots of the app or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was actually thinking that I might show you a demo, but mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have space to kick around. Things would fall <laughs> apart. These are all screenshots, so I think this might be the nearest one, but uh, it only gives you a round, round overview. I can give you a real demo of my phone as well later on. Did you do your own videos for the track? Yes, I, we everything we did, this kind of diagrams we did ourselves. It was really quick, yeah. quick to do. Of course, you end up with a situation where iOS looks almost the same as Android, so that might be a showstopper for some people. But at least in our case, we wanted it to look really branded and really kind of custom UI. So <coughs> as much as possible. I, I think it's quite nice. I mean, that you can make one branding application and still keep the sort of the mm. scrolling dynamics <coughs> and you keep yeah. things platform specific. Mm. People feel at home, but you, you still can you know do your own thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that, that is quite easy. If you want to go fully sort of native looking, then it's a lot of work. And it's extra work, yeah. 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 Or then you pick React Native. Yeah, yeah. and you go React Native. Okay. You mentioned the documentation about Flutter when you started. Do you feel that it has developed and improved since you started, you started quite early? And it's hard to say because I don't read the documentation anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found that the easiest way is actually just to dig, dig into the library by clicking in and see what they do. The documentation is excellent when you look at yes. the code. Exactly, yeah. It's fantastic. It's pretty easy to read. Yeah, yeah. So it is. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. this side. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, the site is getting great actually compared to a lot of other technologies. Mm -hmm. um, if you have no other questions, yes, please. How fast is the development process comparing this native development? Uh, a lot faster. Um, I mean, if I would have to coordinate with an external iOS developer for every single feature that we come up with, like we might come up with, okay, the latest thing we did was uh, uh, we built a survival game where you have to kick like in a very fast, repetitive method or in a way. And uh, that was an entire game we built on the platform. So if you had to coordinate that with two teams, then that would make it, you would double the work basically, not counting the difference. How slow it is to do talking compared to how slow it is to do So it's been, uh, I would wager like a two times two times faster to do. Since you've done a lot of Kotlin, how do you feel about that? Because I have read a lot about people complaining coming from Kotlin. Oh, it's missing this and that. You know, yes. and, you know, <laughs> Kotlin is not my favorite language. <laughs> it's maybe top five, but um, yeah. It's, it's but it's, but it's improving. Design. It's been improving. I mean, a lot of the yeah. new features that you have, I think, is quite nice. Actually. Yeah. I mean, and I think we'll see some more. At some point, they'll get rid of the semicolons. <laughs> 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 maybe. That's yeah. Kind of yeah. Of yeah. Yeah. 
from the new version they made an optional. You made it? I think. I'm not sure. No, no, no. no, no, no. 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 <laughs> Sorry, <Yeah. laughs> apology. It's a, it's a boy. But for really, for me, it's solid. It's simple. It, yeah, it's, it's not. It's not a very complex one. Yeah. There's no ambiguity. Mm -hmm. Copying has this very weird side effects that you really need to go to the compile level to understand what what, what it's happening, mm -hmm. and no yeah. one really uh, is aware of that. What mm -hmm. two people are aware. Yeah. Or one question. I'm really ignorant. I heard about Flutter yesterday, but when you start working with it, um, what are the sort of first things you have to resort to make it call? Um, for, I don't know, what app could I use as an example? HS, HSL app, where, where you buy your tickets. I don't think you have to buy the single one to make it call for that. Uh, but for our case, it was a bit of a border case because you want to do the custom hardware as well. So then you you really want to do native stuff. So maybe the chip is the HSL card the reader. Maybe everything that in that page to base might be yeah. The hardware maybe needs to be. Not there are like as a disclaimer, there are Bluetooth low energy handling libraries for for the product as well, not for button. But but those you. In, in our case, we just wanted to control over <coughs> And in the, in the end, once you get a plugin running, the amount of code you write is, is very tiny, so, so the integration is easy. Cool, if nothing else, then. I have one more question, if I yes. can. <laughs> of course. Do you want to, could you open up a little bit on your process? Like, how long is your iteration? How do you work? Like. You know, you go very simple and agile, or do you have very heavy process, which I don't think so. Uh, did I mention the screaming type on Doins? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> next door. So it's a very fast uh, process. Um, we hear they are developing. Yeah, <laughs> you, you cycle going, you hear, hear the noises. Okay. We iterate very quickly, so there's maybe a, I could say, uh, one to two week iterations, and then, then we move from there. A lot of prototyping. Right now, the, the app is actually a very old version running in the App Store and Play Store, and we're focusing on more on, on iPad stuff and trying to kind of maximize how many of these babies we get connected to on device. And, and kind of playing, playing with those kind of technologies. Do you have a designer as well? In uh, one of the screaming type on the designer. <laughs> he does that. He's done all the uh, One more question. Yes. Um, about the unit testing, you said uh, you kind of went with it, but is there a reason why it wasn't difficult to do? Or well, it, how it's, hard to see? I mean, it's, it's, really, it's, really, it's really easy to build the tests, but, but then again, you get that you know 30 percent uh, extra work done, and you'll be moving so quick with it that somebody opens it up and is connected. Um, so it's been like uh, kind of. That thing, that thirty percent there, has been the one that's stop, stopping us from, from this. And we've done quite a lot of bigger changes, as you can see. This is one of the later screenshots, but then if we look at this, is an actual screenshot from Wikia. So it, the, the whole app suddenly changed to a completely different structure. So I would really like to do end-to-end -end testing there, but I know that I would be making myself very busy if I. At this point, I think it would be a good idea uh, before, if, if there's uh, no more questions, um, before the next next presentation to uh, have a little break. Maybe go to the toilet and grab uh, another beer. And um, I'd also like to remind that all the presentation materials are going to be um, on our LinkedIn and Facebook profiles tomorrow. Uh, so if there's anything else that you wish that we would uh, add there, such as, for example, the demo or oh, any material, you can just tell me and uh, we'll put them there. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm going to try to open the window. Yeah. Excellent. Let's begin. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us tonight here. Um, my presentation, although the event is called Father in Production, this is completely not in production and never try this at home. Um, I just wanted to do this because I wanted to know what's the state of, uh, uh, let's say, this multi platform framework right now, and what, what better than to try Flutter for. Uh, web for that. And uh, I promised to do this about a month ago and I started doing this two days ago. Yes, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so the, honestly, this is like uh, the first touch. Um, so you haven't stepped for two nights? Um, no, I, I stepped for 12 because I'm very experienced. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what is uh, Flutter for web? Uh, let's start asking like how many of you have have uh, done Flutter code uh, like for production or okay one a third so but most of you probably have an idea about Flutter is so it's a framework for uh, developing mobile apps uh, from single dot uh, code base uh, and targeting different platforms okay so then some people at Google thought that why not also do web pages or web apps uh, from the same code. And they started a project called Hummingbird. It was uh, exposed last December. Uh, they did a couple of different versions where they first tried to just do some of the widgets and then uh, make a li limited version. And then they, in, in some of the tests, they decided that it's not going to work because it's not used for a multi platform uh, uh, solution if it's not complete. So they, they decided to. Build, build a whole drawing layer in Dart that's normally built in uh, like uh, in Objective-C or um, Java or Kotlin in Android. So, and as of uh, like a couple of weeks ago in China, they announced that now it's in the main repository. So it's becoming like part of uh, Flutter developer. And it kind of supports all Flutter features, but as you'll see, that's kind of, yeah, it, everything works, <laughs> okay. And probably it's gonna be better quite soon because it's still a young project. And it's very easy to start using in any environment you're developing in, so in the shape, VS Code, whatever, or, or command line. Uh, okay, here was the, this is what they had to implement in, in Dart, and then that's transpiled into JavaScript run into your browser. So it basically renders everything in a canvas, uh, kind of like that would be a mobile device. So everything here is reused from normal water. Okay, so what is it not? Um, well, it's not production ready. They say it's a text review. Uh, there are no missing features and some performance issues. Nothing new to anyone who started using a uh, front-end framework. Anyone used Angular 1, Angular 2, React, whatever, you know, they say that, yeah, it's, it's excellent, but then you build something and it's dog slow. So it might be slow in, in like complicated cases. So many of the plugins will not work, but they're getting there. There's a framework, there's a kind of a, a mechanism to add that way plugins <coughs> as well. Of course, there's no file system access. I actually tried uh, importing Dart IO and everything crashed. Struggling with that. It, 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 it didn't compile. Or, no, yeah. it doesn't compile. But you can, you can get, you don't need it actually. Most of the yeah. industry. And uh, you can do a conditional import. Yeah, and exactly. Get rid of it. And I don't know about cross origin JavaScript. Is that working? Yeah, all like resources. I haven't tried. But also, it's a canvas. So it's not inspectable. Go to the inspector, and all you see is a glass pane full of weird stuff. 
uh, you have to use the Flutter debugger which works in, only with Chrome. And it's not testable with Selenium or any web driver tests because again, the widgets are not there. They're not HTML elements. Uh, so you need to use the Flutter widget test instead. Um, okay, this is how it works to today. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna work like that tomorrow, but in any um, project right now, you change to a master uh, Flutter build and take the latest and greatest. It's available on the account too. Okay, so, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so uh, today I, I did the Flutter upgrade and I got a blank page and then I had to go back to yet, yesterday's build. So that was a dark idea. That was okay. two hours ago. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, being on the master becomes a master. Yeah. There. <laughs> so yeah, like, like I said, some things will break. And then you say config enable web and that will generate uh, the config view for you and, and add, add the Chrome device as one of the other plugin running environments. And then you say Flutter create on your app, or you, if you are creating a new app, you say Flutter create app name, and then you say run give your device Chrome. And that's it. And there's yeah. a server device there now also. I don't yep. know what it does, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I saw it on my IntelliJ today. Yeah. yeah. Didn't try it. But yeah. And if, if you want to create like a uh, production release, then there's a comment for that as well, which I don't remember right now, but it will make you a nice asset pack and then you can just deploy it. Um, okay, I have a demo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think it's support one variable. Sorry? I have to support one variable. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you need to. Uh, yeah, it will complain from part of it. Yeah. When you build the part. Yeah. Point that yeah. Chrome is difficult. Yeah. In my niche. Okay. Okay, I didn't have to do it on, okay. on a Mac. Right? <laughs> maybe they're not. Some bad. But all in all, I think most of the log messages make sense, so it will complain and tell you what to do, add this to your path or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, like I said, I started. Like I, I've spent two evenings on this. I haven't done any development in uh, in Dart before, and it actually this is the first time I launched IntelliJ in a year. So, so this is what I've done. I, I did this um, nice little app. Let's see. I'm now running it in the um, iOS simulator. Um, oh, it's still running. Now it, it's um, it just pulls so. Uh, Stuff from uh, BG traffic API. Um, these are trains going to the airport. Um, and somehow it's very slow. But it only has a couple of pages. And uh, now it's launching again. So I tried using some of the features uh, in the widgets, some plugins, uh, some uh, HTTP calls and error handling, etc. Some async stuff also, it's, it refreshes one, once a minute. Um, okay, the scale train is going. Um, you can click here, it will display that. The stops that the train has. And it has a nice animation, and it also has a glimmer you know, when the train is really soon going. And then, oh, yes, uh, time zone support. Also, I use the time zone framework. So, pretty nice uh, small app for just me to know, let me know when the train goes. Um, so, let's see how it looks like in in the, the web. And also, I think the zoom screen is slowing my machine down. <laughs> Probably it is. <laughs> okay, well, nice looking so. Um, so basically, now I just run the file run the Chrome, and it took three seconds. Well, now it's taking ten. We can compare. <clears throat> mm, I, know, I do 
didn't have to really do any changes. Uh, didn't do any changes yet. To this, so it's running as is. Um, hopefully, it's uh, starting. No demo effect. Okay, it's there. Okay, so works okay. As you can see, some of the fonts are a bit off. That uh, plugin I used, it's broken. Yeah. Uh, some of the animations are a bit dodgy. Okay, that, that also the, the stream is a bit dodgy, but everything kind of works. Um, so you still have to add the local font manually. You still have to add the yeah, local font. Yeah, if I want the font, yeah, if I want the font, yeah, the default device is working or not. You're just getting nothing. a yeah. time for one night. <laughs> Yeah, but it looks okay. And also, I think I, I, I have. I, if I fix this, luckily, I think I have a fix for that. Here, someone left me. A, so I think it even does hot reload now in this version already. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it's not very hot because my machine is. Well, your machine is hot. Yeah, yeah, my machine. Is hot. <laughs> so now, yeah, now I changed that. Uh, and also, I tried to. There's no way yet to recognize that you are web. You can. There is. Is it? Is there a platform or something? No, no, you can't can use platform. That's okay. platform dot yeah. io. So what so works? There is. There's a constant that you can refer to. Okay. And that, that one is set or not. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I tried to solve that today, and I yeah, there, is, there is just a constant that you can yeah. Do. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, actually, now I, okay, now it's working a bit quicker. I changed that to black. It's clear from yesterday, actually. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Very handy. Yeah. So, all in all, I think. Uh, Everything kind of works, so you can make it work. Uh, what I would use it for right now is if you really need to have something that you can embed in, let's say you have a smart TV or a whatever, we have a web browser and a very controlled environment, and you need to have the same app that you're already developing uh, in, in that environment, or like a car configurator that you embed into your web page or something like that. Um, it still feels like work in progress, uh, breaks easily. It's uh, it's a it, you need to really dive into it to really get everything out of it. But I'll give it half a year, I think it's going to be very good a very good option for if you're going mobile first, then maybe you can survive with only part of the web as uh, the sidekick for that. So that's my 15 minutes. So, and if you have any questions, I, I don't know how to answer it, but I think there's a lie. Okay. Yes. Uh, Google Chrome is quite fast. Yeah. Uh, 
but I think they probably aim to target all that. What's the next problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Once the big speed is problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once they get font rendering and whatever problem. Yeah. 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 Then you I saw that when you navigated between pages, the uh, URL has changed. Oh yeah. Did you make any changes to achieve that, or no? It it's a, it's the same route that I used in the the native. Yeah. So only thing I think the forward button probably doesn't work yet. Yeah. So that was mentioned in the readme. So. <laughs> Now. Okay. <laughs> um, any other big questions? They used to have rather rich Oh, uh, you mean the uh, online? Yeah, it shows you which is to run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good resource. I, I think I should add it on the. Um, yeah, this is a web app. Of power reaches, you can try out how they look on, on your browser. And then there's also a code for each. I don't want to use the animated content anymore, but yeah. So now I'll add it to my. Yeah, I have, uh, I'll share the, the slides with you guys. Um, and you feel free to add me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Friendster, MySpace, whatever. If <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. So see if you can find us. But yeah, at least I will put I will put some of the code in the Montel GitHub, and then I will learn how to use. Yes. Yeah. So there's a great Discord chat. I lurked there for two days, <laughs> didn't ask anything, but very active also over the web team seems to be present there. Um, now, every, every, all the code is now in the main part of GitHub, like I said. Um, that's it. Um, maybe it's time to enjoy the rest of the food and drinks and music. Okay. Yes, a question. Okay. Yes. So, such a broad theme here. Has anybody worked on internationalization with the big partner one? Because uh, I'm not so happy with the solution that they have. Yeah, but it looks like it's people in charge of all of the people that they have. Yeah. Yeah, we did a Korean uh, version of our app, but I think it was uh, kind of a completely separate, separate branch. Yeah. Well, so I don't, I'm not so fond of the hard coding ones. I would like to have mm -hmm. something where you can write dynamic updates and you can have the roles that people are translators and they can provide translators mm -hmm. and, and then you can sort of review them, approve them, and then you just push it and you push out new updates to the, to the translations and yeah. things like that. Because otherwise, who has time to fix all the small translation bugs? Somebody who wants to uh, share their stories this, with everyone, this is your chance now. Mm -hmm. Or suggest a collaboration on something or anything. But in other words, uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I will send uh, probably a feedback uh, asking message to everyone. So if, if you could.
quite a few notes on, on how we can improve our meetups. And um, I'm, I'm, I already know that there are at least a couple of other companies who are eager to host the next Flutter meetup. So looking forward to seeing you all there. Thanks for coming. Thank <laughs> you.